Hi guys, today we were discussing a more serious topic. With everything going on with the COVID-19, it has caused a lot of stress, anxiety, worry, and fear amongst those who suffer with mental health issues. Please subscribe and share this video for somebody who may need this information. At the end of this video, I will provide you with a 1-800 number to a 24-7 hotline that may provide information for those who are suffering with these conditions. Fear and anxiety in kids. Varma says it's a triggering event for those with pre-existing conditions like anxiety. For others, it fuels a loss of control. There seems to be a palpable sense of panic. We see it in the panic buying in stores, is one example. Is this reasonable behavior? What we're finding is that people feel that there is sort of this um, pervasive sense of danger and helplessness. Even our traditional ways of coping and comforting are affected. Many religious services suspended. Large gatherings and celebrations banned. It's now social distancing instead of the healing power of touch. Isolation that can lead to loneliness, especially in the most vulnerable. It's a big concern for city meals in New York, serving homebound seniors. You know, no hugs, handshakes, and kisses right now. It's all elbow work and greetings a little bit from afar. To fend off despair, Dr. Varma recommends movement, exercise, and deep breathing, mindfulness, being calm and aware of your emotions, and meaningful engagement, staying connected with FaceTime, calls, or even writing letters to loved ones. We also need to realize that there's a, a, a role for healthy escapism. There's nothing wrong in taking 15 to 30 minutes out and watching your favorite show. To stay healthy in uncertain times. Hitting the pause button. And the virus is... As fallout from the coronavirus comes at us fast and furious. To watch it all the time, uh, we're going to end up with some kind of PTSD symptoms. Everyday events canceled, changes in the workplace, schools closing, putting many through the emotional ringer. Any of those by themselves would create anxiety, uncertainty, discomfort, or anger. While it's important to be aware of new developments, Catherine O, a psychologist at Cleveland State, There are so many different layers of anxiety. Says limiting your consumption of coronavirus updates is one of the best lines of defense in protecting your mental health. Be skeptical of rumors, you know, make sure the news is coming from a good source, but limit it to about twice a day or three times a day. After you check in with what's going on, if you find yourself feeling anxious... So if we can stay calm, then our immune systems are going to be stronger. O's advice, fall back on the practice of mindfulness, which has been taught for hundreds of years. Stop and breathe, get in touch with what we're feeling. Um, try to be accepting of whatever we're feeling. Also, remind yourself that others are feeling the same way. I'm not alone in this. We're all together in this. That sense of community can easily get lost during a crisis, according to O, if anxiety and fear take over. Perfect example, people storming stores to scoop up basic necessities. A scarcity um, effect comes into play where we think there won't be any of that. I'd better get all of it that I can. So, what can we do to try and move back toward a place of peace and calm during this crisis? Seek out positive stories, like Kevin Love donating $100,000 to support Cavs Arena staff after the NBA suspended the season. It's really remind us of our shared humanity um, and also our ability to be generous, to come together as a community to help each other. Reporting in Cleveland, Mike Brookbank, News 5. We're supposed to be six feet apart, but tell us, how do people handle the mental part of dealing with fear right now with this pandemic. It's more than just fear, it's panic, right? So I, I tell people, listen to, to all the health authorities, but don't let this take over your life. So what can you do to prevent this fear, especially for people who have PTSD or depression, but even folks who do not, what I would say is, number one, that you know that you're not alone. This is a community of folks. Everybody is being affected. Reach out to your family and friends. Number two, stop watching the news. I'm not saying stop watching Carolyn. you got to watch Carolyn. But don't watch the news 24-7. Take, take seven, breaks, right? right? Exactly. And also, make sure you exercise, eat properly, get some sleep. And lastly, I love meditation, relaxation techniques. All that will get the fear down. But we got the only way we can beat this is to not 
lose control as a community. And also help other people, right? Our elderly Absolutely. neighbors and our elderly family members, make sure they have food and that sort of Absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Uh, we're going to be here. This phone bank is going to be open until 6.30. We want to thank our friends from Ascension, Beaumont, and Eastern Michigan for taking time out of their busy day to be here to answer your questions. We're going to put hotline numbers for you as well after this phone bank closes for you to call if you have any other questions. So very important. I'm going to send it back to you, Alan, in the studio. So fear is a response to perceived or actual threat or danger. And closely linked to that is anxiety or worry or stress, which can come about when things are uncertain or unknown or unclear to us. And as COVID-19 is a new virus, and as we are still learning very much about this, although tremendous work has already taken place already to learn about the virus, it naturally can elicit these types of feelings. So. You will hear this message repeated quite a lot, but it's really important to bear in mind that fear and anxiety is part of the normal response to this new situation. So many things can cause fear, and one of those things are the, is misinformation and rumours. So this is something that can exacerbate people's fear. And it's why a repeated message for managing fear in the COVID-19 response is to, to get facts. So facts minimize fear. Um, and these facts can be obtained from credible sources or trusted scientific sources, for example, WHO um, or your national or local public health body as well. Um, in, in terms of fear, Many of you might not uh, think that you are experiencing fear or worry, or some of you might be thinking that way. It can express itself in various different ways. So you might be experiencing a high level of questions uh, that you're as asking yourself, or a high number of thoughts that you're having. So questions like, how do I protect myself? How do I protect others? Uh, what's going to happen with my workplace? These are all very natural questions to be asking. And if you're asking these questions, then I would again encourage you to go find the facts uh, and get the answers um, as well. So fear is something that's designed to keep us safe. Uh, so it makes us take action to keep ourselves safe. But sometimes the actions that we take might be inadvertently harmful to ourselves or to others. So this can include things like uh, stigma, this can include uh, panic-like behaviors. It can include things like uh, over-watching uh, distressing sources of information. So sometimes fear uh, can be both helpful and keep us safe, but also could be harmful as well. And so it's important for us to think about how do we manage that fear. So during a, a situation like this, and it very much depends on the situation in your own community, children uh, will experience stress, oh, sorry, children can experience stress and they might present in many different ways. They could be more attached to you or more clingy uh, to you. They could be sad or crying or withdrawn or even uh, to the point of bedwetting if they're very anxious. So children express stress in different ways. And we, well, what we encourage is for parents to give as much love and attention and their time uh, to comforting their children if they are experiencing this. Now, children are very smart, uh, they're very perceptive, they can tell if something is different or if something has changed. For example, perhaps you're having, as a parent who's working, perhaps you're having to work at home more and your child has noticed that, or perhaps their school has closed um, and they've noticed that as well. So children are perceptive to these changes and will naturally ask questions. What we would do is encourage you as parents or caregivers of young people to be as honest as possible with them uh, because giving children clear messages about the situation in a way that's adapted for their age can help them to understand what's going on. So remember, again, uh, the idea of facts minimizing fear applies to every part of the population, whether you're a young person or a parent. If, you, if you're in a situation where you're having to spend more time at home or your kids have had to come off school, we would encourage you to try to maintain as normal a routine as possible. 
uh, for that child. So helping them to retain onto some sort of normalcy, and if that's not possible, to create new routines, which include times for playing and times for learning, if that's possible. So there's a big role that caregivers can play in this. Um, here we go.